much of it, but it's also about Dion, you know, Dev's character, giving a message to this robot kid in very negative circumstances that he must be who he is and no one should tell him uh, what he can and can't do. So I think it's a great family movie and I'm so glad there is a, a science fiction movie that transcends a lot of the, the labels because it was a very satisfying movie to do and I'm very excited to see how the world responds to it, frankly. I'm, uh, I agree a lot with, I, I am agreeing a lot with you, Sigmund. <laughs> yeah. yeah. um, but I, I, I'm drawn to story and I'm drawn to character. I, I think back to the films that really stunned me when growing up, like Indiana Jones. I, I loved Indiana Jones and all the action was great, but I just loved that character. The next day I wanted to be Indiana Jones when I saw Deer Hunter, Robert De Niro's character. It, it, it was those characters and I think what Sigourney said is so true. People are going to watch this movie. I mean, my daughter's only nine, she probably can't see it, but I, I kind of wish she could see it, because I know she would fall in love with Chappie, my wife, who, by the way, will tell you openly that she's not into science fiction movies, crying during this movie, and she absolutely loved it. So it's a movie that speaks to everybody, um, because it's a movie, as Neil would say, which is about the soul. What is consciousness? What is it to be human? What is it to be alive and conscious? So that speaks to everybody. Следующий вопрос, пожалуйста, у кого микрофон? Здравствуйте, Кристиан Мадров, журнал «Достатный кадр». У меня один общий вопрос для всех. Вот, а, как вы относитесь к идее создания в нашем реальном мире в будущем роботов, которые могли бы заменять людей? Ну, вот, например, роботы-журналисты. What, did you say what kind of robot would we create, or what? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm one of those people who'd prefer to have a driverless robotic car than a human driving it. I mean, uh, I live in New York City, and I can tell you, it'd be better to have cars not with humans driving it. I, I generally, I think, it's not something to be afraid of. When the train was invented, back whenever that was, a lot of people on the planet thought it was the greatest evil that it would destroy humanity, that this was going to change the world for the worse. We're evolving, we're changing. If, if something truly like a robot like Chappie could be created, I mean, I watch this movie, I prefer Chappie to almost every human in the movie, so I'll have that. No, I think I'm very excited. I feel like, um one, Neil started to send me links about robots, and I had no idea how advanced these industries were around the world. And every culture seems to create robots that are very expressive of what's important to them. So in Japan, you have very sort of graceful women robots, and then you have very kind, sort of very, uh, I don't know, very humble little tea making robots. And of course, America has these terrifying soldier robots. And um, but for me, uh, as a working mother, if I could have had a nice, friendly robot, you know, when I go home from school, who had cookies and milk and said, "Tell me about your day," and actually could maybe film it, and then I could see it later when I came in after my show was over, I feel like they're going to be part of our lives instantly, and we're going to look back and think, how did we ever do that? Yeah. I think um, I'm all for humans. I, I, I hope they don't take over the humans' jobs, you know, these factories and things like that. So, you know, uh, I'm kind of old school in that way. But I think, you know, in, in jobs like, you know, firefighters or police officers, you know, if there's a way that robots could aid and help save lives for the people that put their lives on the line for us, that would be incredible. You know, like in Chappie, you know, there's this... My character creates this droid that helps aid the police force in South Africa and you know the police deaths that are all time low and civilians are not dying anymore. I think that's a really cool idea. Хотели ли бы вы работать с роботами журналистами, запрограммированными на хорошие, интересные, всегда подводные вопросы? Спасибо большое за фильм, за прекрасный. И благодаря 
постучал весны в русскую драку. Вот участие играет героев, на которых хочется быть похожим. Другой пример подойти вы в этом фильме. Вопрос Деву Патрелю. Как известно, в площадке была одна хаическая модель робота и Шерлок Тукопли. С чем и с кем было удобнее работать приятно? Спасибо. Anything, and he 
except when Ridley walked on set. Because he's obviously a huge uh, fan of it, so much so that he's going to do one of the Alien movies. But I was there when Sigourney walked on and he was like, that's Ridley, that's Ridley. <laughs> I think your first three takes, I don't think he was really watching at all, except like a little fan. But Neil, Neil is the, the perfect kind for me, and I'm sure you guys agree, sort of amalgamation of a director with unbelievable vision. He wrote it, he directed he sees the movie in his head, and yet somehow allows you to collaborate and change things and improvise on set and just to work things. He, in his mind, as long as he's got something near what he thought he was going to have, and he's very efficient and quick, he's happy to let you play it. And in the final movie, there's just as much of the, the playtime takes as there are sort of the original ones. I think he's just very open and creative. I lost that. But, but the mullet was his idea, just to be clear. I thought it was a brilliant idea, but have you seen mullet in Russian? Mullet, haircut. Do you understand? Do you understand? I mean, you don't know how to translate it in Russian, but it's not in English. You don't have a word for that haircut? Uh, no. The business in the front, party in the back. Right, but we can read this. Yeah. If it's all the rage, you should all wear it. All around the world, the mother is coming back. I recently saw Leviathan, which I admire very much. I thought it was um, certainly indeed a story of, of corruption, but also there was something so moving about showing the sort of relics of those whaling ships and showing the whale frolicking outside. And the, this man, who was sort of the main character, he come from so many generations of, of men who could do these extraordinary things, living by the water and whaling, and there was no place for him in our modern society. He was ending up, you know, fixing cars. And to me, that was the, the larger issue, was that the, the people who were now running society were people who, who wouldn't know how to do anything. And this man who could do everything, you know, uh, had no power, and I found it a, a really remarkable film, beautifully acted, beautifully directed, and kind of terrifying. And it won the Oscar, right? No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's It's nominated for an Oscar. Nothing wrong with that. Дорогие друзья, следующий вопрос, пожалуйста. У кого микрофон? Вставайте. Понятно, что этот фильм не первый на подобную тему, был и «Бегущий по лезвию», и «Искусственный разум». Поэтому вопрос ко всем трем гостям. Пересматривали ли вы классику научной фантастики именно на эту тему, чтобы больше погрузиться в тему? И есть ли у вас любимые фильмы, посвященные искусственному интеллекту и борьбе человеческого и искусственного разума? Спасибо. Wally, I watched Wally. <laughs> I watched Wally too. Yeah. I mean Wally. <laughs> well, it's interesting, you know, you make a very good point. I, I wish I had watched those movies that I was working and I, I didn't have a chance to, but I would love to watch them now to see what the takes so long ago were on AI. When you hear Neil talk about artificial intelligence, I'm telling you, it's a whole different thing. He talks about weak AI, which means, honestly, programming a robot that can be useful to society, and then hard AI, which is creating a robot who could surpass humans. And that's the kind of robot that Steve Hawking and Bill Gates are worried about. But although I don't know why Bill Gates is worried about anything. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I guess I think what Chappie will a robot uh, by the name of Chappie will start as a conversation that we, we should all have about all these different kinds of intelligence. I think it will, I think it will be only good, and the fact is it's inevitable. It, and they will, they will only reflect what we are anyway. And as Neil says, if they surpass us and end up, and we end up being extinct, so be it, you know? I am giant. To me, it was one of those uh, movies I'll never forget. And I, I kind of love those movies like Wally and I and Giant. And, and I think Chappie, in a way, will find itself in that sort of company in that you, everyone watching this movie, this robot called Chappie, people will fall in love with. And 
There's so many movies when you say it's the future, robots, and people go, oh, that's the end of humanity, they're going to destroy us all. And yet, Neil's asking the question, what if the robots that have consciousness are actually the better parts of humanity? What if they're more sensitive, more caring, more understanding, more connected than, than we find it? More rational. More rational, yeah. Пожалуйста, следующий вопрос. Добрый день, Александр Козлов, Антон. Вопрос ко всем присутствующим. Вы звезды огромного уровня мировой величины. Скажите, пожалуйста, какие есть особые условия, требования у вас на съемочной площадке или на премьере фильма, как сегодня, без которых вы не можете работать и не можете приехать? Food. Most actors just yeah. cross service. Food. Yeah. yeah, good cross service. Good cross service. I think each other. I mean, having done some science fiction films that did involve green screen, blue screen, uh, the Alien films really didn't do that, and, and uh, Avatar really didn't do that. To be with your fellow actors and Charlto, for instance, there's nothing. That's the main thing you need. I mean, it's nice to have a good Come director on, and a good script, but... Come on. Sigourney wouldn't talk to any of us. She stayed in her trailer the whole time. And we were instructed not to look her in the eyes. So I don't believe any of this. But I mean, you're, I think special effects movies are difficult. Uh, and you really need partners. And that's where I think the soul comes from in these movies. Yeah. Fair <laughs> sure. 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 Меня зовут Вера Свернова, интернет-портал Woman.ru. У меня вопрос ко всем гостям. Фильмы показаны недалекое будущее. А вы как вы видите будущее через 5-10 лет, учитывая стремительное развитие нынешней технологии? Спасибо. Things are changing very quickly, but actually my gut feeling is things will take slow. I mean a little longer. I mean, if you look back to the cartoon The Jetsons, back in the 60s, people thought really by the 1980s we're all going to have our personal little helicopters flying around. I think there's a number of factors going on and there's a lot of things going on in the world we need to take care of, including the planet um, and issues of poverty and many other things. So there are, there are things that put brakes on technology, but I think it's exciting that the, the, the brains that are really kind of dedicated to advancing technology for the betterment of our lives. And so things will change quickly, but I don't know if it's quickly as we think in five years. Or, yeah. I don't know what the state of robotics is in Russia. I know that uh, it's, it's much more advanced than I realized before I did the film. I think it's really, I, I disagree with you. I think it's imminent. I think yeah. as we exit, we will be all replaced by robots. And in fact, probably someday they will be holographically here instead of actually with you. And there will be good things and bad things about it. But I do think that, that there will be a different, I think human beings, we're so emotional and we're so, so sort of impulsive that creating rational beings to sort of give us a more pure universe. And I do think that they may be a, a, a supportive restraining influence that can actually be very positive. But I think, honestly, in about five minutes, yeah. robots are going to be walking kids to school, and robots are going to be teaching, and robots are going to be psychiatrists, just nodding, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. To them. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting to be living now. Дорогие друзья, пожалуйста, вопрос, и это вопрос последний. Добрый день, я начала свою газету «Собеседник». Добро пожаловать в нас, очень рада вас видеть. У меня вопрос к Нью и к Сигурне. Вы неоднократно признавались самыми красивыми, сексуальными, привлекательными актерами по разным версиям. Вот что у вас делает такими сексуальными, красивыми, мне кажется? Как вы работаете над своим телом? Какие у вас есть бьюти-секреты? И вопрос к Деву Паттелю. На мой взгляд, вы сыграли главную роль в фильме, который был способен серьезно изменить какие-то вещи в Индии, вы следите ли вы за собой тех районов, людей, о которых был снят этот фильм, вот, что, что вы знаете, как там сейчас дела. Спасибо. Okay. Uh, wait, where should I start? Um, you 
you could start talking about Sigourney and I being sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Distractingly beautiful, I kept forgetting my lines. Um, uh, no, this was, uh, you know, it's very rare for me, unlike these two titans here, to, you know, when your manager calls you and they're like, uh, Neil Blomkamp wants you to be the lead in this film, <laughs> and I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, it was a very simple decision, um, and uh, it was very flattering, really, and I, I came on and, you know, despite the obvious cliches, it was a character called Dion Wilson, and uh, Neil sat down with me, he's just like, I want you to be able to bring heart to, 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 to my film, and I, I was just like, I, you know, I hope I can do that, and it was incredible to be, you know, surrounded by these guys. Um, in terms of Slumdog, uh, yeah, that's, um, that, that, that film that like, I'm so proud of, uh, you know, to be represented and associated with that. I, I, I'm drawn to every man, you know, every man character, to the underdog. I love the idea of someone that has to rise through adversity, you know, in a world that nobody really understands them to achieve their goal. They're very tunnel vision. So, for instance, in Slumdog, I played this character who was searching for his soulmate in a city of, you know, like millions of people and he would stop at nothing to find her. Um, and this, you know, you've got a young guy working in a company and everyone thinks he's crazy because he wants to create robots that can write poetry and love. Um, but he will stop at nothing because he thinks that's the next step in evolution. Um, so it's, it's more about relatability in a way. And, and, and for actors that look like myself, I think, Sunbox opened a lot of doors, you know, uh, in terms of storytelling, like uh, in, in terms of the, you know, the African-American struggle, you know, you have all these greats like Sidney Poitier and Will Smith and Denzel Washington and Keith Penny Jr. and Morgan Freeman, this goes on. Um, you know, the people I grew up looking up to uh, was like Bruce Lee, <laughs> you know, he was the a strong figure, you know, um, of ethnic minority that I saw on screen that played this lead role and I was like, God, he's... You know, um, so when Sunbelt came out, it was a very unlikely hero, and I think it gave a lot of people hope. So, you know, I'm really proud of that. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right, go on. What does it feel like to look so good, guys? <laughs> I want to hear what Hugh has. <laughs> well, it's, this is a long answer. It's not easy. <laughs> uh, it's a long regime. Um, it's a revolutionary regime, uh, so I'm happy to share it with you. For many years I've kept it secret. I do take a shower every day. <laughs> I wear moisturizer. Yep, got sunscreen. Very important. And on top of that, you just gotta be born a certain way. I'm sorry. But those three things will help.